This year we used Forrester Algebra 1 for my 8th grader and we used it alongside the Math Without Borders Homeschool Companion video series. The textbook can absolutely be done without the video series. He just teaches what's in each lesson. So that's what we are going to look at today. I have the student edition as well as the teacher's edition. Now I bought these used from my local homeschool bookstore, which is in Raleigh. It's called the Homeschool Gathering Place and you can actually call them and they will ship nationwide. So I will leave their number down below. There are, I think, three versions of the text used. Two of them are from Addison Wesley and one is Prentice Hall. I think the newest version is Prentice Hall. And my understanding is that you can also buy it new from Savas Publishing. I haven't looked, but it's pretty easy to find these used. So today we will start with the student text and then I'll take you with a glimpse inside the teacher's edition as well. As most textbooks do, they start with introduction to the student, the teacher, acknowledgements, and then we move into the table of contents. Again, pretty standard stuff. Forrester does teach some things a little out of order compared to other texts, but in a way that makes sense for the way he presents things. So you may see that out of order, but you know these books were originally published in the 80s, so <laughs> they've stood the test of time. Before we get into it, can we just admire this 1980s style photo here of people not looking at you, black and white, not really all that engaging. <laughs> it makes, makes me smile. In addition to the glorious photo, each chapter also starts with an introductory situation that goes along with whatever the chapter's main concept is. So this one is all about mowing lawns and how many, if you mow three, lo three lawns a week, how much is that and how much you charge. So just introduction, introducing it to the student. One thing that I really like about this textbook is that there is not a lot on the page. There are clear teaching, but it doesn't even go like the full width. There's no extra problems on each side of it. Lots of white space between the problems even. I think it's a very clean layout especially if you have a kiddo who tends to get distracted or has trouble focusing on what they need to focus on. So each lesson begins with very clear step-by-step -step introduction to whatever the concept is. Then we have a couple of example problems. Then he always gives an objective next, so just a summary of whatever this lesson is. This one is operations with numbers and the objective says, given an expression, be able to evaluate it. And then, not every time, but in some lessons, he gives you step-by-step -step directions of what the student should be doing. So, you should do the following to evaluate. Write the given expression, do the innermost operation, and write the result. Use an equal sign, I <laughs> like that he includes that. Keep doing the operations until you reduce the expression to a single number. Again, use equal signs and then clearly indicate the answer by underlining it or boxing it. And I really like this detail as well because assuming your student takes the time to read all of this, they're also going to be reminded of how important it is to make sure that your answer is clearly written, which you if you've had experience with some kiddos, they are not, that's not an intuitive thing for them. <laughs> After he does the teaching, he also gives the students problems to work. And these dotted lines are meant for your student to put the paper there, work the problem, and then check their work. And as he goes, they give clearly written reasons on why you're doing each of those steps, which again is really helpful, I think. There are always several lesson problems, usually somewhere in the three to four range. Some of them will go up to five or six, depending on what it, the topic is. 
and then in blue they give you any definitions that you need to know. Now, since Matthew was doing it with the video lessons, I wasn't doing a lot of teaching of this, but we would go over what these mean and have him tell me in his own definitions. We would take a look at the examples after he watched the video to see if he had any other questions about it. And then he would move on to the work. Another thing I like about it is that there are plenty of exercise problems for them, but not an overwhelming number either. My daughter used Lyle math, and there were definitely times when the problems were overwhelming to her <laughs> because there were so many. In fact, Matthew used Lyle's pre-algebra before coming to this book, and he, he prefers this one for his style. Jumping ahead to chapter six and another glorious 80s photo here. So this chapter is all about the quadratic formula. So all of lesson one is about memorizing this. He's not teaching what all the letters stand for yet. He says you'll learn it later. Right now, he just wants you to memorize it so that it's just easier <laughs> to do the problems later on. And I like that he gives, in the exercise, gives tips on on what everything is as far as where the lines go and such. Now, in 6-2, I didn't show you before, but some lessons will have an oral practice. We didn't do these every time, but what I would usually do, if we were gonna do it, would be that instead of doing it as part of 6-2, we would use it as a warm up for 6-3. So before he did this, we would do this. And that just got him going. Or we would do it after he did the video, but before he started the problems, we'd come back and do it. And I usually didn't do all of them. It depended on how many problems there were. Another thing I like about this one is how he writes it to remind the kids that they already have information that they need to solve the problem. So for the completing the square, it's like you already know how to square a binomial. Remember, here's how we did it. Oh, and recall, here are quick tips for it. Now, let's do a quick review and then we can just reverse it. If you know the pattern, you can reverse the process. I, it's a subtle thing, but I like the way he encourages them to make connections between what they're being taught new and what they already know. I already showed you that some of the blue boxes are for definitions, but some of them will also be a technique. So for this one, completing the square. If your problem is set up, this way, boom, one, two, three, here's your result, or here's your steps. I really like that as a quick reference for kids. When we would come across one like this, I would use one of these post notes and put it in. So that way, when he was in the lesson, he could find it. Each chapter does include a test, a summary, and then the test itself. There'll be different kinds of problems. Some of a multiple choice. There are some that are word problems, that kind of thing. Then he also does cumulative reviews twice. So chapters one through six. And then here are some things that your student needs to review for it. At the end of the book, he does have a review of the whole book as well as a final exam. We did not do very many of the tests. We did a couple, but for the most part, I really wanted him to focus on mastering a textbook and then the material. He also includes a table of square roots and trig functions. And then there's the traditional glossary. And then the solutions, or just the answers to all the odd problems in the book, except for the tests. As is standard with 
public school textbooks, they look pretty much identical. This one's a little wider to allow for the answers. The teacher's guide is pretty self-explanatory, of course, but a couple of things to note. One, at the beginning of each lesson, they tell you how long to allot for the days. So a one day, two days, two and a half days, whatever. There are some examples, additional examples to work together if these are not enough for your student. And they also give you an assignment for them. Otherwise, it's laid out just the same way as the student text, except that the answers are in blue. Sometimes the answers will have notes so that you know what things students might have problems with. So for example, this one says that problems 23 to 26 have some tempting canceling that produces the wrong answers. 27 through 30 can be done by canceling first, and 31 to 40 will cause division by zero errors. For some students, in spite of all you have said in class, <laughs> and I love that because we all have those times when we tell our kids a hundred times something and then they still do it wrong. So that made me smile. I think these kinds of notes are especially helpful for homeschool parents who may not have much knowledge about teaching math and what to expect and when we should expect that our students might have problems because it's easy to be going through our lessons and they seem to get it all and then you're wondering like why did they miss all of the last 10 questions when they got the rest of it right and they seem to understand it well maybe there are little things like that that kind of tripped them up and sometimes teachers with more knowledge, more experience might know that, but when you only have three or four students in your entire school, <laughs> it's not enough time to get that experience. Now I wanna flip ahead to chapter six again to show you what it looked like since I showed you that. It's the one with the glorious football photo. So some more exam more information about the quadratic formula, problem notes, what their assignment is. Obviously some of these are going to start having longer answers over here and they'll put them over here if there's not enough room to put it in here. You can see like this one has over here, but then jumps. I think the illustrations for word problems are really good in here to help a student really understand what is actually going on rather than just reading it. Sometimes illustrations could be hit or miss is what I found, <laughs> depending on the book. Matthew, my student, he used this one. He's my third kid to go through algebra. So we've had some experience. We also used Lyle for my oldest who did it with an online class and then my middle son used or middle could have used Mr. D's and I do have a couple videos about that so I'll link it. <clears throat> now I did keep one of the thicker post-it notes on here. They can be moved easily, so I used that to keep track of where we were in the book for grading purposes. The video series he did was just the teaching and not the grading, so I had to do that. And I did find this book really easy to grade from. So that's a look inside Forrester's Algebra 1. Thanks for watching.